Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to Dev Chatter. Uh, my name is Brendan. Uh, obviously I am the tiny little dinosaur down in the corner. Um, and I am capable of speaking with my tongue out and my mouth closed. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a pretty good day. Uh, I've got my cameras off today, uh, but uh, we are still going to do some coding. Uh, there's a couple of things that I want to have a look at. What's going on on the screen? Slack? What is that? Hang on. Okay, I have no idea what that was. Um, something must not, uh, one of one of those must not have loaded for some reason, but either way. Um, <clears throat> the stream should be up and running and everybody should be able to hear me and uh, we can still write some code. Um, the program that we have running right now Hey, Mr. Shoji, welcome. Uh, the program that we have running is called Interactive 7. It is this WPF app that we've got here, and we are going to be building some cool new stuff for it today. Uh, I've started that a little bit, but I want to see to what level we can customize it. Now, I'm going to give a little bit of background so that we can explain what it is we're doing for anyone that doesn't know. Uh, we are building a program that... Uh, adds interactivity to Final Fantasy 7. Now, Final Fantasy 7 is a game that's about uh, 22 years old now at this point. 23 years old? Yeah, something like that. Um, and um, it was built for the original PlayStation, uh, but there are now um, modern versions of it. Uh, the modern versions run on PC, but they're still the same old game which means that modifying it is not that difficult because the older games didn't do a lot of complex stuff with game engines that uh, and didn't use managed languages where memory is going to be difficult to work with. So what we're able to do is read the memory of the game and just have a look at what all these values are and make changes to them. So that is the program that we've built. Uh, if you are new here, I, I want to welcome you. Feel free to ask questions uh, or anything like that during the stream, uh, and uh, I or someone else in chat will be glad to answer them or provide additional information. Okay, so what are we building today? That is going to be... Uh, so, thanks to Mr. Shoji, who's the guy in chat, uh, we have this nice status display uh, that we can show information from uh, the characters during the game. So this is just constantly updating with information. Well, we took that concept and we added um, basically custom menus that anyone could use as their background menu anywhere inside of their stream. So if they want to have one of these blocks, they can just do that and it'll look kind of like the one down on the bottom of my screen where uh, we are explaining what we're doing. The neat thing is that we provide control of the menu color in the game, so while the player is playing, and uh, I will show you what that looks like. So this menu here, you'll notice, looks very similar to the menus that we have, uh, and you can tell that that's all the same theme. But if I were to click a nice button, like say, uh, you know, change the colors, uh, you'll see that with a chat command, I can change the colors to whatever I want. And you'll see that it changes in all these various windows. And it's all consistent. So, those work great. There are some other things that we can do in the game, like, uh, whoops, not items. We can change characters' equipment. So Cloud currently has Ultima Weapon equipped, but I can say uh, Cloud Weapon 0. Um, oh, whoops. Weapon Cloud Zero. Derp. Uh, and his weapon will change to the Buster Sword. And we can just do that live during the game while the player is playing. We can just change out their weapon, which is really, really neat. However, 
I want there to be some kind of notification on the screen of the streamer when these types of interactions happen. So right now, if you look at my screen, you can see that on the right hand side, uh, I have some uh, text that shows what's happening. And in the chat, it said that it equipped Cloud with a Buster Sword, but I would like some notification to pop up on the screen that says that same thing. So that is what we're going to work on today. Now, we have a couple of options for how to do this. We can either make it so that there is a box like this and notifications pop up, but what I would rather have is the notification be one of these. So have it have all the colors, so look like this itself. But I don't know if we're gonna be able to get that styling right. Either way, uh, I started this task a little bit using a toast notification library, but we may switch out to another one. I want to show you uh, what I was doing with this. So if we open up events, and we have this right here, uh, if I say weapon cloud one, it pops up and says equipped cloud with a mithril saber. And if I say weapon cloud 15, it says equipped cloud with with a Ultima weapon. That's funny, I really should fix the way I say that. I guess it says that in chat too. Um, if I rephrase, then I don't have to worry about getting the correct article of an A versus an AN, um, which might make that a little bit better. That'd be the smart way to do it. Uh, let's hop into the equipment command. Um, equipped blank with I guess you could just say, with that, equipped cloud with Ultima weapon. And you don't have to say A or AN. You can just say it. And that's probably fine. Okay. And that works great. So how did I do this? What did I set up? Um, I added into the equipment command this thing called uh, just a status hub emitter, which is the same way we tell all of our other status displays to update. And when you call this, it just calls to a signalR uh, method. And if you have a look over here, we just basically say, okay, call down to the website and tell it show event. So, uh, hey, Janisku and uh, Swoog, thanks for that uh, uh, host. Uh, we are just starting up here. So if anyone is uh, was lurking around over there, uh, you can see how uh, Interactive 7 gets developed on this stream today. Uh, so I want to open up index HTML in events. So it's this one. And what we're going to take a look at is how that gets called. So when we connect to SignalR, <laughs> how's Bazook? Uh, thank you very much for that sub. And uh, the, I should say the uh, resub. Welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, I, I promise I, I did my, uh, my head banging. Uh, you just couldn't see it because my camera's off. Uh, I might turn it on at some point. Uh, anyway, the uh, the show event uh, event that we're connecting to right here is what is relevant. So when we call it, you'll see that we have uh, the method that we attached it to. We said, hey, when you receive this message from SignalR, go ahead and call the on show event function. And we're just going to call toaster and do this. So for now, we're trying out a library called toaster, but we're going to try another one as well. So let's have a look and see if we can find a library that we like better than toaster. Um, so I want to see if there is a CDN for another uh, library. Yeah, that one should work. Uh, I should need the JS and the CSS. All right, so I'm just going to toss these on the top. Uh, that should be the CSS. There it is. And then uh, I need the JS as well, so I'm going to grab a script tag for that. So we're going to try out a different uh, notification library to see if we like it better. So this one's called Noti. And uh, I haven't tried Noti before, so we're going to find out how it works. Uh, 
So we've included it in, and now I want to make it actually do one of these. So we're apparently supposed to create one and then say show on it. So let's do that. This is just their example thing. New nodey dot show, and we want to show event text. So that's what we want to show. We're going to get rid of our call to toaster, and we'll see what happens. Uh, if we're not doing anything else there, we don't need that. We'll look at what their other options are later. So let's restart Interactive 7, and we'll find out how this... Actually, now that I think about it, I bet the HTML page might have been able to just get modified without a restart, but either way, a restart will be good. Yeah, so I want to get uh, event notifications in here, both so that we can uh, alert people to what changes have happened, and I also want to be able to tell people what mode we're currently in. So uh, if we do create the mood system that I was talking about, where we can increase or decrease battles or make some other persistent game effect changes, uh, I want there to be a screen where uh, a streamer could show that to everyone so they could see what was going on. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, yes, I need to open up the events page. And... Then I should be able to just say weapon cloud uh, 13. Equipped cloud with heaven's cloud. Uh, that's the old one. Did this not refresh? I must not have refreshed it. Equipped cloud with a hard edge. You know, for coming in flat, I'm kind of okay with that, actually. Um, now the question is, can we style this thing? Uh... Standard Nodi CS, and they have different themes that we can pick from, it looks like. So let's let's toss this on the screen. So we'll have a look at this together. Um, so they say they've got themes. Now the question is, can we... So there's layouts, there's different types. A custom container. <gasps> there we go. That's what I wanted. Oh, man. There it is. There it is. I think that's it. Hang on. If they really let me do this, then then that's the answer. Um, what's the error? Oh, no, I know what the error is. Okay. Hang on, everyone. I think, I think we may have this. I think we may be done already. Um, new notey. Is that what it is? It's this. Let's do this. Uh, and then what's my container's name? My container is, uh, well, it, so it showed it picking it by class name, but, uh, hey, IEP, uh, doing pretty well. Um, I'm wondering if I pull it maybe like this, if I tell it to look for FF7, that might do it. Let's have a look. Whoa! Okay, that put it in the container, which is not exactly what I wanted. Uh, Mercalias, uh, welcome. Thanks for that follow. Much appreciated. Uh, is that to answer the question of what dino is the best in Final Fantasy VII? Yes, Janiscu. Uh, and it is, in fact, the Chattosaurus. Okay, so that filled the whole box instead of... Uh, Which is a little weird that it, it filled it filled the container. I don't necessarily want it to fill the container. Um, types and layouts. This must be to put it in a custom container. Which I guess we wanted in that container anyway, but it seems weird that it doesn't uh, it can't use it. How do I change the theme? So you can pick the theme, but can I modify the theme? Can I do a custom theme? Uh, where is their... where's their source? This is public, right? Oh, 
Uh, IEP, we are adding notifications. Uh, I will show you what I'm talking about. So, well, first off, let me fix the color so it's a little bit nicer. Uh, weapon Cloud 10. So we're making little notifications so that the streamer can find out when, uh, like an, as anyone watching a stream can find out when stuff changes. So right now we're starting just with the equipment commands for when equipment gets changed, but we'll add in notifications for all the other ones as well. So... Hey, Janisku, you won! Congratulations, it wasn't rigged. Um, Alright, so what are all the options? Uh, layout. That's choose where it's going to appear. Theme? I think we might be able to modify the theme. I'll have to look. Um, Okay, so we want to make sure we set a timeout on it, so it disappears automatically. Um, and a progress bar, so let's add that. Just now. Uh, maybe a few seconds on the screen ought to be good. Is it timeout like that? Yes. And we want to do like 3,000 seconds, or 3,000 milliseconds. Uh, and then I also said we want progress bar, I think. So we're going to say progress bar true. Um, and then... Uh, um, animation close. Uh, we don't need any sounds for it. Uh, we don't need a title. It doesn't need to be a modal. Uh, I don't care what ID it uses. Huh. Template. Hey, there you go. Thank you. That's why I was going through the list. Are you able to force a custom size? Yeah, so that's what I'm looking at to do. Mr. Shoji is correct. Template is the one I want. Uh, where's template defined? Either way, I will steal that and see if that does it, because uh, if we can just use the template this way, then I want to see if I can define some HTML instead of having to put it in there like that. Uh, well, I guess let's try it. We'll, we'll just try calling this right now uh, in our page, because the page is running, so I can just put it here. Oh, event text isn't defined. Ha 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 ha. Event text wasn't defined. Ha ha. Uh, event text wasn't n wasn't not defined. Good job, me. <laughs> event text was not defined. Ha 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 ha. All right. So in theory, I should be able to put this in there. Uh, now, can I define? Uh, where did you find template in that documentation? Uh, Noty template. I want to use one off HTML instead of hard coding it in there if I can. Oh, that's funny. Uh, in the V2 one. Uh, yeah, the V2 documentation seems better than the V3 documentation based on that. Uh... Did they actually say what we can do with it, though? Oh, options and defaults. So maybe it was in my options and defaults, too. No? No? Uh, apparently not. They don't tell me about it here. Now, did it actually use it? I guess that's the question.
I'm not sure it used it. False. So we're going to tell it to just stay here indefinitely. That way I can inspect it. Uh, I think it may not have done anything. Yeah. So maybe they removed the ability to template? Uh, if that's the case, we could switch back to version 2 if we need that in order to get a template. Because I want a template. I know, right? We might, we might have to downgrade this, which is silly, but hey, if it works... Uh, so, it, yeah, so it automatically created one, but that means it can't run with something else. Um, I, I want to search that again. Uh, Nodi cust custom template. On template, uh, wait, an on template callback? What is this person? Uh, with the custom container option, can we make a notification that looks like this? Is this, is this, uh, okay, so this is the one I was looking at before. Uh, but does this actually do something? My cus uh on template we're gonna say Oh okay. <clears throat> I wonder if I could give it the HTML of an existing element on the page. So like if the element exists on the page, can I give it this template? Then how do I define where the text goes? Do I have to manually put it in? I do. Okay. So if I were going this route, we're going to have to pull the the text and put it in there. Um, so it looks like we're just overriding what to do when it asks for a template. Yeah, I'm I'm not a fan of the way they're doing it, but I think I think there is I think there is something we can do with this still. Um let me have a look and see if the documentation we were originally looking at um talks about the on template option. Uh details are here. Okay. Let's see, were there actually any details? Or is it just lying to me about this? Note, the nodey body is required for the set text API method. Okay, so it looks like we can create a callback for that specific one that is like this. So we'll create callbacks and put it on template on there inside of that and have a look. Callbacks, and it was a collection, right? Yeah, it was one of these. With an on template. Now, can I grab the HTML from the other one and put it in here, or how's this going to work? So, when we set these, we're setting it to a computed style on here. So we're forcing the style on these. I wonder if there is a way to make our JavaScript work a little bit differently here, because I kind of want to tell it, use this specific one. So... Um, let's 
So can I do this? Um, um, hang on. Uh, If I did a what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Hey, S and B, welcome. You made it to the stream. Greetings. Uh, hey, and Pudding, you made it to another stream as well. Welcome, everyone, and uh, thank you for the uh, seventeen-month resub. S and B, you're coding too? Uh, no, no, I've got the camera off today. It was giving me a bunch of trouble. Uh, I ended up starting the stream up a little bit late, and I just switched that off because it was giving problems. But maybe lighting's okay now. Uh, my cam, yeah, everything was messed up. So let me try it. We'll see if it comes on. All right, we're gonna see if the camera comes on today, everyone. If, it, if it's all messed up, I'm going to switch back to this guy, but we'll see what happens. Bye-bye, Dino. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Yeah. That's not bad. Slight, slight illusion, slight shimmer. Uh, okay. So, what do I want to do? I want to... Uh... I want to grab one of these and uh, inner HTML the thing as the uh, HTML of this, I think. But before I do that, I think I want to set the text of it, right? Oh man, how do I uh, how do we want to do that? What happens if I do this? Let's just see what it does if I do this. I won't have the right type, so I'll probably get a JavaScript error because of it, but we'll see what happens. Hype! Yes, that's right. We got an S and B here today. Uh. Yeah. Um. No. That. So. Um. I'm fine with freezing it at the time that the uh, the uh, message popped up. Uh. Sh Shoji. So. Um. I think that's fine as long as it's not. Um. I just don't want it to be forced to just one color. But like if if one message pops up like one color and stays that color for the three seconds it's there, I'm okay with that uh, staying that way. And then, uh, you know, because it's going to disappear after three seconds is the idea. So. All right. So let's try that and see, does it just blow up? Uh, that. Oh, I didn't dot show it. I am missing like another curly brace. There we go. Event text is not the one. Yes, I know. I got that. <laughs> to do. Show is not a fun. Was it not show? Lowercase s. Of course it was.
Undefined. Nice. Um... Oh, whoops. Whoops. <laughs> Just fire a bunch of those like that until I remember to put that in there. Okay. Um. What is the inner HTML of this, please? at this exact point. Undefined. Okay, so app is not one that it can actually see. I swear I've got something called app. Is it supposed to be like that? No. But Oh, okay. But it doesn't have inner HTML? Did I do that? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking is I must have done that. Which is annoying, because I let it autocomplete, so I wouldn't mess it up. It's what I get for letting it autocomplete. Yeah, it's funny. I have it right on that part and not on that part. Um, and then I'll get rid of the debugger. Ooh. Well, that's weird. So, it popped up with, like, nothing there. That must be because I decided to skip the piece that it told me was going to be required. Which is totally on me. I skipped the piece. It said, hey, you were going to have to have this, and I chose not to. Now, uh, see, dot noty body is required for the set text API to happen. So since they are... So I'm apparently supposed to be able to say this.options.txt in there, and I don't know if that's really going to be the case, but we'll find out. Um, lowercase t. This options text, yep. Okay. Uh, but te text equal that. We'll save it, and up here, I'm going to put this, the noty body thing on that, and we'll see what we can do with it. But first off, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to restart just so that we can get that going again. Uh, I want to make sure that it's um, working as expected. Uh, oh, if SNB didn't win, then it was clearly rigged. It was clearly rigged, it rigged if SNB did not win. That's how that works. All right, let's try this again, see what we get. Okay. Uh, refresh. Load this again. And now... Um, whoops. Would help if I did that. Do do do. Lime purple. Uh, yep, yep, yep. No, no exclamation point to change the uh, the regular color. All right. Weapon cloud eight. Equip cloud with a rune blade. Okay, so no text came up again. So we still have that problem. But I'm betting that this text will do it. Let's have a look at the sources. Did it adjust? Nope. Okay. Let's drop a breakpoint there. All right, so the text came back correctly, and then we were gonna set that. Now the question is, do I have a way of replacing? You know what? I could just do a simple replace now that I think about it. We could just do a dumb replace uh, just to get the text in the right spot, and that would actually be fine. 
I can't see any reason why we couldn't do that. Um, what did? Because they just, you know, force that in in the right spot. I wonder if we do the same thing, if it would work for ours. I don't think so, Mr. Shoji. I don't think so. Um, my guess is that I can do this. I think I might be able to... I, I don't know exactly what it's doing, but... Um, For now, I'm going to put that there and just say, like, uh, switch value, replace value. So this one, and then text. Turns back the string, right? Uh, Hello, uh, Daniel. Hello, Doctor uh, Doctor X Design. Greetings. Welcome. Because uh, I don't remember how to do it a better way. And we're just trying to test something really fast to see if, uh, like, I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm not crazy. That'll totally work. We're just trying to make, the, like, we want a better way. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I could, but I can't here because we're not doing, we're not exactly doing that. Uh, we are doing something else. Um, I could potentially set a value, but what I don't know is whether it's going to copy it or something else. So the library we're using needs HTML defined for the template, and that's the problem, is we're defining what it's going to use for a notification uh, text box. So if this were just a display on the page thing, I could obviously do that. Yep. Yeah. So this is not, this is not, like... With that this is for customizing what a notification message looks like so different from the rest of the view app uh, so it is using this noty uh, library that we're trying to do for yeah th this yeah we're, we're putting a we're just adding a library in and we're hoping that it works this way maybe we're about to find out <laughs> uh, why didn't I debug this that was foolish of me I should have debugged Okay, so it's connected again. Let's have a look. So it says replace this, which is fine. This is the template we're supposed to be using, which I can just hide the template then. Uh, so in theory, then if I say weapon cloud five, should come in here. We caught that breakpoint. Let me just use our debugger instead of the breakpoint. That should have replaced. Okay, and doesn't come up. Okay, so my guess is that they really, really do want me to have those things that they told me they wanted me to have on the callbacks. They were saying that I needed to make sure that I have noty body on something, right? Which I'll do, because it told me to. So I will listen to you and do it. Oh, I already actually have that there. Okay. What else am I missing then? This reply thing. Oh, that is hilarious. The example that someone used over in JS Fiddle is on the is in the docs now too. That's great. Um Nodi body, nodi header, nodi header. Huh. Seems like it's not tall enough, which maybe the problem is that I'm not holding the space. So you make a very good point, Mr. Shoji. Um, let me make one quick change to it. Uh, we're going to make it stay there forever so I can have a look at it. You make a very good point. 
uh, which is that we should confirm that it really is, um, you know, not right and just, you know, could be a sizing problem. If it entirely is just a not tall enough problem, then we just have to find something to force that height. <clears throat> Uh, weapon cloud two. Okay, uh, so somewhere on this page, that HTML should exist. There's the original one. Um, what? Isn't this the current? There it is. Okay, so here's our Nodi alert, uh, which has a theme thingy. It put in one of these. Okay. Does it actually have the text in there? Clipped with a hard edge. Seems to be there and just doesn't hold the style. Yeah. Um, this is holding. So why is the rest of it not forward uh, computed values height 9 pixels yeah so you're thinking that because we have margins, we are forcing ourselves into nothingness. So let's turn off our styling then. Which means go to this one, styles. You're thinking it might be our margins killing us, which is a great point. It very well could be our margins killing us in all of these. Which I'm going to mess up the styling of the main one doing this, but I should probably have that hidden anyway. Um, yeah, the, the background color should be fine. Never getting anything to display. Deadman. You'd try removing their sizes? We don't have control of theirs, though, so I'm hoping to... Uh, overflow hidden. Uh, there was an overflow hidden on one of these that I didn't spot. Yeah, I'm a little surprised they put as much theme as they do in here still considering um what we're what we're doing. Oh, there it is. Okay. Position absolute is what's got it. Cuz once I get rid of these, Ok, 
can I get rid of all of those and then does it appear? Well, not with the styling being what it is right now, but... <sighs> so it's really hard to see, but it did appear here. Yep, that's what makes it appear and disappear. It's that value. Okay, so let's refresh this and have a look now that I know where it is that's, that that's disappearing. Uh, so, weapon cloud zero. We'll, we'll buster sort him again. <clears throat> and then when we take a look at this, if we just open up this one, this should mess up everything, right? Yep. That butchers all things. wonder why it's having trouble being in there. Um, no, we can't force it. Um, yeah, the big one will be hidden, which gives us this, and then we could fix the text. But something else has gone, like, we still have their white background, which I'm not sure how to get rid of yet. Um, so, like... Uh, I meant color. Um, it was, like, white, something like that. Then the text is suddenly readable, which we'll need that to be adjustable based on the on the coloring, I think. Um, based on whatever the current menu color is, we might need to adjust to light or dark, which might mean that we'll take like an average uh, HSL and just figure out like, do we want dark or light? Um, because this is what I want it to look like. I want these little notifications to pop up. Because that would look great. Having little, you know, Final Fantasy VII menus pop up when stuff changes would be really cool. Um, okay, so that's the margin that's holding that spot. We need them to have a transparent background on this. Which is just this piece. So if I remove their background color uh, and that border, then that looks okay. Yeah, that's not bad. One of these popping up every time, that would look pretty good. Um, matching the color of the current thing. So in Rainbow, you'd be getting every event would look different. Yeah, so um, Mobster, the reason why it's affecting everything is because I have a full version of it covering the whole screen. If I if I get rid of that one, if I just hide that, uh, then you won't see that. Um, I could do like a, a style uh, display uh, none on that or something, right? And then you won't even see that anymore, and it will just go away. Uh, so on this, we were thinking that these styles need to change. Uh, so instead of being an FF7 menu, like this one is, um, this is going to be uh, a notification. which will lose these values. For now. Um, for now I said it was white. 
but that's not necessarily going to stay the same. We might change that. Um, but let's just do that. Um, yeah, exactly, Shoji. That's why I wanted to use a library that does these, because there's so many little intricacies in how little toast notifications work from, like, stacking and making sure they disappear at, like, good times and things like that. I don't want to go and, and reinvent the wheel on that part, so... Okay, so now it's it's not displayed, which is good. Uh, let's go back to something fun. Um, I should get rid of that debugger, so I stop hitting it. Okay, it doesn't quite show up just yet. I th oh, I didn't change it. I did not actually change it to use it. Index HTML. Uh, there it is. Okay. Now, I'm going to find out if I really do need that or not. And I'm getting rid of the debugger. Now, we could just hard code this with, like, the default colors. And if we made it the default colors, then we'd basically be in pretty good shape. We could just set up this styling one time, just hard code it and use it, and it would always look like Final Fantasy default colors, and that would probably be good enough. But I would like it if we could get it so that it matches the colors of the, of the game we're playing, because why not? Look, <laughs> that sounds way better. And I'm... I, uh, there's there are styles for that in place. Not sure what's killing them. You know, now that I think about it, it's not. I don't think it is gonna hard code. I bet it's gonna change. I bet it'll change. Uh, hang on. I think it might update, actually, as we, uh, when, when the colors really do change. Um. Okay, so first off, that popped up kind of okay. The margins need to get fixed a little bit, so, and, and the background color needs to get fixed as well. So we need to, again, lose their background color and their background border. Um. We've got a little bit of other border as well in there that's a, that is a problem. Um, so we have a little bit of... We've got some styling issues, but it, it seems like it came up okay this time. Um, yeah, it's right here. Um, that's the edges of our border being clipped. Yeah, it looks like it. Um... So we need to hold our we need to hold our margin a little bit, probably. What happens if we give this a slight margin? Ten pixel margin. We don't need anywhere near that amount, but that does show it. There's our full margin. So if we did a four pixel margin on that, that would hold and that looks good. Uh, good call, Mr. Shoji. Uh, realizing that that was just our margin. So margin. Uh, now the question is, we don't. We probably don't need it actually on all sides, right? Uh, okay. So that one can hold at three, and it's fine. That one does need four. Whoops. Uh, okay, apparently that one's totally unnecessary. Because something else is holding it for some reason. So this one does need four. And this one needed... You know what, I actually like it a little better at three. Uh, and actually... Can I bring the top down at all? I think that actually looks best. Three zero four three. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're gonna do that. Put 
that in there. Uh, three zero four three. So nice, nice. <clears throat> uh, I need to do the other test I was talking about, actually. Um, I want to try uh, running a rainbow while we're doing that and see what happens. So we're gonna we're gonna run rainbow while we while we do this. Okay, so the program's running. There's this. I'm gonna refresh this page. All right, uh, I'm gonna hide that just so we can see it going. So, okay, so again, we know their background is wrong. I'm gonna hide that again. Um, we're just gonna have to override the style to make sure that uh, that, that gets hidden. Uh, their background color, I mean, and the border so that those don't appear. Now that it's gone, it should be gone uh, until I refresh this. So, weapon cloud three. Weapon, Tifa, she's after cloud, right? Yeah. Okay, so these are the types of notifications that we want to have showing up. We want it to be able to say, you know, equipped cloud with hardage, and now for the test. Do they change? No, they don't. Okay. But we get this. So they will come in at whatever one they were and then would disappear after a few seconds. So it'll match and disappear. And I think that's good enough. Um, I really did wonder about that. Um, what what's it, uh, what's it actually putting in here? Yeah, it's putting in the, val the, the calculated values at the time. So yeah, oh right, because they work with that. Yeah, okay, never mind. Yep, that's just how it's going to work. Okay, well, I think that's not bad. Um, the problem that's going to come up is when someone does menu white, which we'll see when the rainbow ends. Um, when someone does that, then we're going to have a little bit of a problem because we won't be able to read the text. Um, I'm not sure what we're going to do about... Um, uh, hey, Brave Cobra. Uh, CSS font with uh, outline. Is this what I want? Adding a stroke to web text? Is this what I mean? Yeah, we can try this. So the 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 browsers available for this text are very limited because this is going to get run inside of an OBS browser source uh, for a streamer. So we don't have to support all browsers. We just have to support the ones that um, the text styling on the main party compensates for that with shadows. Uh, as, yeah, how did you do that text? Uh, I didn't actually ever look at that. Okay, yeah, so you did a text shadow on that. I guess we could do the same kind of coloring. I guess if I just mark it as FF7 text, uh, as we could get away with the same thing. Um, like it's done here. Uh, 
inside of an FF7 just having the text class. Isn't that, what, isn't that what we're doing? Or do you do something special in the character component? Uh, stat, stat. Nope, looks like nothing special in there. So is our text not applying then? Oh. So if I take that and I put that text inside of a span, which I could do actually by doing this pretty easily, I could just put a span around it here. And we could get away with that. Uh, the text styling on the main part. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's funny. You did say to do it exactly the way I just did it. <laughs> I apparently didn't read that right. I was like, oh, no, I could just change it so it's... And you're like, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> All right, so we're going to need to remove their styling when it shows up again, but that's fine. Yee. <laughs> didn't didn't come out quite right. Uh Yeah, but which thing changed it? That's the question. Okay, so the, uh, where's the one that actually has the text? Text. There's the shadow. Font size, 20 pixels. It says it's just coming from ours. if that's doing anything it doesn't appear to do anything might affect I mean it's probably affecting yours while I'm doing that but yeah the problem is we're hopping off the screen then when we get this too big which is kind of funny uh... that actually doesn't look bad in bold I think it looks a little better in bold Yeah. Uh, 
The goal of that is to make it so that if someone does this, though, uh, that then when we get those ones, whoops, that we can still read it. Yeah, so. See what I mean? So, it's fairly readable in all of those because of the the coloring with the shadow on it. It makes it a little readable in all of these spots. So, it's not perfect when we do that, but it does seem to kind of work. Um, but I do really like the look of those. Um, oh, yeah, with a mixed one, yeah. See? And that's got some dark and some light on it, and you can totally read it. So, it's not, like, super easy to read, but you can read it. So... Yeah, so I could switch those. The The intention with this is that this font uh, looks similar to this font. See see the idea? Is uh, it's, it's supposed to look like the same kind of style as in the game. Which, because they did it just with basically this little shadow thing, if you see what they did there. So it kind of holds it so you can see it even on a light color. So like, menu white for example. Even if it's white, you can still kind of read it. It's not easy to read, but you can a little bit. Now, there's some other ways that we can do it, and it wouldn't match the style of the game, then, is the is the problem. So... But yeah, the goal is to make it look like this one. Oh, thanks, Common. Appreciate the lime. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, so... I wonder why this stopped sending those. Why did we stop getting messages on here? Not getting errors. It's definitely changing them, but it didn't send the message. Oh, uh, you're right. Uh, I have a limit on active toast, and they come in. That's actually super nice. That's that's kind of amazing. I'm actually really glad it does that because that means that we can limit how many are supposed to be there and as they disappear the new ones will show up so we don't have to worry about extending beyond our, our uh, a certain height or something like that. We just know how many there, there can be. That's nice. Thank you, Toast Notification Library, exactly why I don't want to build my own because having to remember to cover all those cases and set them up is a pain in the rear. Okay, um, yeah, they will go away automatically, because we're going to set them, instead of doing timeout false, we're going to do, like, five seconds, and then they disappear. Uh, we're going to say false on this, and I want to take a look at their other options, because if they just have one that will disable the background color, uh, nodi background color... Noty. Options and defaults. Um, so I think we're going to want to have it on the bottom rather than on the top. Um, and like sort of building up as they go, I think. Um, uh, theme, text, timeout. Um... Uh, hang on a second. Nope, don't want that. What 
is this Q system that it has? I love how it sends me here, but doesn't actually have anything at all explaining the Q. One bit. Okay, so that is like you can set rules for specific sets of them. Okay. Uh, I'd like to believe... Uh, uh, the in-battle messages? What do you mean, Mr. Shoji? Uh, which which in-battle messages? I'd love to know what you're talking about. Uh, but either way, uh, Shoji, um, thought on that one. If uh, Keep in mind, I am going to be sending this up to the repo and you have access to it. So... <laughs> If you do want to try messing with stuff on it, you are totally able to. Uh, if you want to try making it look more like that. Um, close all notifications. Uh, name queue system. Container. The ones you get at the top of the screen. Oh, yeah. Um, I know what you're talking about. Like... Um, when, when different effects happen. Um, uh, one thing I'm actually thinking about as I look at this, um, I think we can put it in a, I think we can put it in a container. So if we made a container that took up the full size, I bet it would take up the full size. So, I think if we just did a container that was the size of the screen, we could put it in that container and resize to it. Does that make sense, Mr. Shoji? Uh, common, we, we can absolutely do that. We can, we can let chat mess with the limit. Uh, yeah, so as Mr. Shoji mentions, we, we do know the exact memory location where that value is stored. And we can modify the the current limit break during combat. Uh, we can technically modify it out of combat, I guess, if someone really wanted to. I don't know why you would do it out of combat, but I guess you could do it in preparation of combat. But that seems silly because then someone else can just come along and change it on you before combat starts. So... Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, yes, there are a lot of chat fights uh, in in uh, Interactive Seven. It's one of the one of the things that, that people have commented to me before. They're like, "Well, you need to at least keep menu there for a while." And I'm like, "Why? Like, someone else wants to pay to change it? They can." Like, I guess we could let a streamer decide how long they want to keep it, but I don't see any reason to force that. Okay, so. It kind of works. The things we need to figure out, we need to get their menu, we need to hide their menu colors. So let's let's just go through this in order. So things I'm doing each time. Uh, so weapon, cloud, one. Okay, so I want to open this up. We need to get rid of their border. So where is that? That is on this. So I need to make sure that I add a style afterwards that messes with this style. I need to take this and say no to it. Um, which I might be able to do by just doing this. Unless someone else has a more whoops has a more fun way of doing this, this seems like it'll work. Uh, yeah, sorry, Mr. Shoji, I actually make you write out the word scissors, which requires spelling. Uh, Zeke G, hey, greetings, welcome. Uh, I'm guessing that's how you pronounce your name. Uh, okay, so I want to say, what is it? Transparent and. 
This is zero pixels. There is none. And color is getting overridden anyway. Uh, that's true, although uh, rock, paper, scissors does work. Uh, congratulations, Mr. Shoji. Because the game gave you paper, uh, you won instead of if you had chosen scissors where you would have lost. So, congratulations. It's rigged in your favor, apparently. <laughs> Okay, uh, we're going to restart this and see if that actually got rid of them, because I believe I, I add this style in last, so it should overwrite their style with this one, and we should get the correct one. So let's see what happens. So Interactive 7 is live, we're going to refresh this, and then we're going to say Weapon Tifa 16. Uh, whoops. I gave her the weapon she already had again. Crypto with the Dragon Claw. Okay, so now, our, so that's one styling problem changed. The next one we need to figure out is why we've shifted off the screen here. But I am wondering if I put it inside of a container that's taking up the whole space, if we can't do that. Uh, so, whoops, uh, that's not the right one. This is the right one. So this has, this is basically my template. But if I do this instead, um, if I make a div here that is app, and then I make this be, uh, instead of calling app, this will be sample, uh, Notification, or maybe template. Nodi template. There we go. So that'll be the Nodi template, and that's display none. Then we can use this down here as what we actually pull. Oh, you're right. Unless I put it in that. Um, I just need to put it in it. it. Just needs to be inside of it. See? Problem solved. Just needs to be in there. You're right. It did. It did need to be in there. I forgot because I was I was doing that. Um, so this then just needs to take up the whole space. Um, hey, Common Rider. Uh, thank you very much for the 100 biddies. Uh, yes, exactly, Zeke. You just need to be inside it. That is exactly what we said. Yep. Uh, let's restart. We have this container. I'll figure out the styling for it over there. Uh, actually, you know what I should have done before I did that? I should have done the custom container option, which I think is just container. Yeah, container. We're going to set container to be app. So let's do this. So container is app. Was it class app or ID app? ID app. I'm assuming that they that they accept that. If they don't, then that's completely insane. Custom container selector string. Yeah, it says it's a selector string, so I doubt they limited to just a a class selector because that that would be just wild if they did that. <laughs> Okay, so that's live. Let's have a look. What do we got? What do we got? Fingers crossed. The 
equipped cloud with a crystal sword. There you go. Five seconds later, it disappears. So it's holding no space when we do that. Um, so that is interesting. It's pulling the... So it looks like it works. If we do it like this. What's making our background color black? I just have that on my CSS. Okay. That's fine. Streamer can customize that black disappears pretty easily. Um, so that looks like that works. Um, the font still needs some work. Yeah, I was going to suggest people just run it with black, uh, which I think would look good anyway. And you're right, you probably did put that in there as part of getting the colors right. I remember you talking about that a long time ago. I don't remember all the specifics of that. But I want to get this committed. Uh, and then we can just look at what the changes are as I do that. So... Um, Okay, um, so let's see if we can't fix the font color. All the color in the menus ends up with an alpha. Nothing is solid. Yeah. See, with big font sizes, that's totally readable. But when it gets small, that is hard to read with that shadow. this applying something too? That's why it's so weird. That looks better. I left my other one in place. I got it. I'm I'm crazy. I left this other thing here. I forgot I left those there. That explains it. Yeah, see? No, it was just we had both in there, which makes total sense. We had two things applying the same type of style, and it was like... Oh, yay! Something weird's going on. Yay! It's gonna look nice now. It's like, I figured as long as we look, looked at those styles, we were eventually gonna figure out why something was messed up. But, um, equipped cloud with apocalypse. Alright, hang on. Menu, white. Weapon. Cloud. I can read that. I can absolutely read that. It's not easy, but I can totally read it. That's that's big. All right. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's about as readable as in-game. Yep.
There we go. I can absolutely read every one of those. That is perfect. Yay. Yep, that looks good. Hey, hey. victory. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is uh, removing uh, clashing style. All right, pushing up those changes. Okay, that looks nice. Um, I am happy with, with that being like that. And then you can adjust this down to a reasonable size and put that on the screen somewhere. So that should be good, and it would be similar to having the same status menu. And you just put that along the side, and it is limiting to some quantity. It looked like five messages at any given time, so if people spammed in a bunch of messages, that's how many you'd see. So let's see if we can't alter some of the other commands to do the same type of message. Um, what is this? Uh, I have a play with sizing and padding. Uh, uh, it would be appreciated, Mr. Shoji. Uh, it, it's, those are little things that we can tweak a hundred times before we actually get precisely the way that we want them. All right, so I'm going to toss one of these. So we put it in those uh, objects. Let's have a look. Uh, the materia command. Materia command needs one of these. Okay. And then... Show event. Message. Message. See if I can get it to keep the color cycle too. Yeah, if you're gonna do that, that is gonna be tricky because uh, like you might be able to find a way to do it. If you can, that'd be amazing. Um, I wouldn't kill yourself over that one. Because I think it actually looks kind of interesting to have, like, you see what the color was when it was triggered, because it'll only be a few seconds. I think it'll be interesting during a rainbow to see, like, five different versions of it. If they change, that also looks cool. But I think as is is, is also good, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't put too much into it. Message. Message. Okay, so now item and materia command should do the same thing, which we'll verify in a minute. Uh, what other commands? Oh, drop gill. That, that'd be a good one. Uh, where's the gill commands? Uh, player gill, uh, give player gill, remove player gill. Those are the ones. Uh, okay. Also, something I realized, our gill commands that we created last week we need to adjust them. Um, and the reason we need to adjust them is we need to make it so that they don't work mid-combat, because I don't know uh, if it will cause a problem to have done it that way. So we'll have to find out. But I think there's a chance that it did. I think if you're using the command that uh, lets you throw gill at the enemies 
that I'm not 100% on whether you can modify that gill at the time, because I don't know if when they instance a battle, if they duplicated the amount of gill that you had and adjust at the end, or if they're actually pulling that from your gill. So I don't know whether or not they made a copy of that. I would assume not? Yeah, exactly, Shoji. I, I, I agree, I think they might have, but I don't know for certain. That's why I'm like, I don't know. So, it's it's weird, because they when, when combat starts, the game instances out separate versions of everything. So, kind of weird that they do it, but hey, it's how they chose to do it, so... Show event message. Okay, so now all the add and remove gill commands should apply to that. But just in case, um, give player gill command, remove player gill command. Um, now where's the equipment command? What's it inherit from? Uh, it inherits from base command? Okay, then it's how I create it that matters, isn't it? Yeah, register non-battle command. So those are registered as non-battle commands, so you cannot use them in battle. Removing the player gill. Uh, ah, yes, you're right, Mr. Shoji. Um, uh, it's probably for things like the battle square that don't keep the changes. Uh, yeah. Uh, Zeke, what's your dangerous thought? I'd love to hear a dangerous thought. Dangerous thoughts are fun. If there's a second storage for it, you can just update both. Uh, yeah, I could just update both and it'd be fine, but since I'm not updating both yet, uh, I want to only update in one spot. Now, I did look at one point into changing weapons mid-combat, and that does not seem to work without, like, changing a whole bunch of stuff. You can't just modify the ID. I think it pulls all the values as well when combat starts. Could you make a command that swaps a party in like the option you have during uh, a Bizarro Sephira? Ooh. I'm not sure how that was implemented, uh, but that's a neat idea. It would be really cool if you could do that. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. They pre-calculate everything based on which equipment you had going in, so uh, you can't modify that without literally modifying all the stats, which is a mess that I don't want to get into right now. Oh, uh, so you're thinking that when the like when you change party, they're just switching to another fight, uh, Mr. Shoji, which very well might be how they implemented it. If they did that, then again, that's a, a mess that we probably don't want to dig into just yet. Um, uh, either way, let's give these a try and see what happens. All right, so let's bring us in, and we're going to go ahead and bring this up so we can see it. We're going to refresh it. And now... Whoops, Barrett's 31. Uh, weapon, Barrett. All right. Uh, drop gill. Find gill. Thought that's what I called them. Is that not what I called them? Maybe I don't. Oh, I bet I don't have it turned on. I bet I don't have it turned on. Yep, they're not enabled. Okay. Now they're on. Boom. 
Oh, he didn't have enough. There we go. Whoa! And in case you were wondering, when we do that, we really are modifying the gill total. See? And those messages that pop up are related, so yay! Okay, so that works for those. Um... I think we can do the same kind of thing with uh, applied status effects then as well. So we can make status effects show those also. So when you give a status effect to a character, we will display one of those messages. Uh, and I don't think that we're going to do any of the invalid ones. I think we're only going to put in the messages that something actually changed. So messages to tell someone, hey, we skipped this character, that can go into chat only or something like that. But one that we applied to will do this way. So, um, yeah, applied that to this person. So, so we'll say message. It's right there. And now uh, I want to make sure that this is I status hub emitter. And don't mind the name. At some point I'm probably going to switch it out for mediator anyway instead of using our own custom one, but the base status effects command, that's where I want to pass it, isn't it? Because the other one's going to need it also. All right. Because when I got to Cure, I was going to say, hey, I need it here, too. And then it was going to become really obvious that I wanted to do that. All right, so now that I have message, I'm going to say underscore... Uh, wait, what? Protected, please. Set a sub emitter, show event, message. And while I'm in here, I kind of want to change these, because right now we say applied to top, but I kind of want to say the character name. Uh, you didn't add all the battle addresses because you got lazy. Nice, Mr. Shoji. I totally get that. Uh, <laughs> I have a lot of memory addresses in some files on my computer. Uh, many of them that I found, some I've gotten from other people. Uh, I got a good amount of stuff from the uh, Pseudomods uh, community. Uh, theirs are all different from mine because theirs are coming from different places. So there's an adjustment I have to make to theirs. Uh, there have also been some communities that have found them uh, for the old PlayStation version. So anything I get from anyone else, I have to adjust the memory locations for it. But All right, so that's how we show that one. Asuna command. Asuna is not a base status effect one, apparently. That's funny. There's message. That's where it goes. Okay. Um... Emitter. Create that. I can get onto the same spot down here. That show event message.
Oh, did I say heal? I bet it's heal. Yep, heal status effect command, there it is. Okay, so that is an eye status hub emitter here as well. So we're going to pass that, and then we're going to pass it in as a parameter. And then that will let us use it down below also. So removed it from this character right here. So that's going to be message. And then show event message. Okay. There we go. So now those should work. The next thing I want to adjust is names. Because right now, here's what it does. Uh, let me get us into a combat. So you can all see this happening. Um, so we're just going to run here. This will trigger a combat. Okay. So combat starts. Some guys run over. We get in this fight. Instant battle that comes up. Uh, that's some interesting weapons they have. And now what I can do is this. Uh, Zufu, no, this is not the remake, but we are adding interactivity to the original game from 1997. Uh, so, I can say... Uh, poison all. And then if you watch, what it's actually going to come up with is... Well, assuming I have it running, don't I? I do not have it running. Derp. We're going to put this along the side of the screen so you can see the messages coming up from this. We're going to connect the program. We're going to make sure that's visible on the screen. So it announced them all here. It didn't show them here. Did I not refresh this? Maybe I didn't refresh that. Do not all. Okay, removed negative effects. We can see that over on that message over there. And so the problem is that it says top, mid, and bottom. And that's the problem. Um, I don't want it to say top, middle, and bottom. I want it to use their names. So that's our problem. Hey Zufo, welcome. Thank you for the follow, much appreciated. So let's change that and see if I have the name at the time, I should be able to get it and display that instead of top, middle, and bottom. So what did I pull? Let's have a look at status. Well, let's look at Asuna because it's a little easier. <clears throat> Who are the allies? These are, so allies is where I get top, middle, and bottom from. So that's where you specified that. When we check that the target is valid, what do we check? I check the party status variable, which I have right there. So if I pull this as a method to get the specific character, so let's make this a method. So we're going to extract out a method that says uh, get targeted character. So get targeted character will get me back a character. It's targeted 1T. Guess maybe it is. Must be. Wouldn't be yelling at me if it wasn't. Yeah, that looks better with one T. So get targeted character, uh, and this is that's the ally. Uh, so that's ally. Allies, ally index. Okay, so this might be empty, but we wouldn't get to the end here if it were. In the valid target, so let's check the validity that gets the valid targets. We target and hit them. So at this point, since we said they were valid, we know they're in there. 
So let's go ahead and, and see if we can do this. So we're going to say... Um, Get targeted character by target. That's the character. Character name. Yeah, I think that'll work. Let's let's see what happens. So let's make this protected instead of private so that it can get used by these ones here. Um, how does check validity work in this one? Ah, we uh, where's, where'd that come from? It's protected in the status effects command. Oh, and that's gonna be, yeah, and it, because it works this way, this one has to have its own copy of it because they're not the same? No, if they're protected from it, uh, they should use the same one. Uh, valid, safe... No, they're not the same. Oh, because we made has status effect. Character record has status. Yeah, so that's stata has status. That's they don't have it. Yeah. So because they work in opposite ways, they're not the, they're not exactly the same. Okay, so I will not mess with them just yet. I'm going to leave them alone. We'll leave it exactly as is. Um, and I'll just do a get targeted character on here. And just do the same thing. Character name. Character name. Invalid target. So we're going to say character name. It's not a is a is not affected by that status. And then invalid target. Uh, and that's going to be character name is immune to that. Uh, and I think those are the only, yeah, those are the only ones in, in heal. And then let's look at the main one. So in this one, again, we went through the, in, the invalid targets as well. So invalid targets. So already affects character dot name. And then in this one, invalid targets, and instead of saying top, middle, or bottom, we're going to say character.name. Okay. Okay. That works. Let's give it a try and see what happens. If this works, it's going to be a nice upgrade to uh, Interactive 7's uh, status effects in combat. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's refresh this view so we can see those notifications popping up again.
Okay, applied regen to Barrett. Applied regen to Tifa. And that should apply it to Cloud. There, it applied it to Cloud. Uh, and now it should tell me that it was regen already affects Cloud. And those are only showing up in chat for those ones. Um, now I should be able to poison all. Which poisons all of them, and then I want to Asuna all. And remove negative effects from, and says all their names. So that is nice. It looks like it works as expected. Uh, I was able to affect top, middle, and bottom by words, use the alls. And they're all uh, putting in the names of the characters they're applying to now. So that is huge. Now, for a test of this, what happens if I rename them? So what if I say Cloud... Um, so, and I say, um, haste top. Oh, already hasted. Oh, yeah, that's funny. It said Brendan. Yep. Okay, so it is chiming in. Oh, slash all manipulate. Um... She has manipulate. That's hilarious. I must have given her the manipulate materia at some point. That's funny. Machine gun and hand grenade are what they have, huh? Shoot yourself, buddy. Ha ha! Okay, anyway. Uh, so that's actually a huge upgrade. I think people are going to like that one a lot. Um... Uh, so this is, um, display, uh, more status, uh, display more event messages, uh, and update status messages. All right, um... Add, remove, gill only outside of combat. Nice. Okay, so we've made this little status thing that seems to work. Uh, I'm going to guess Mesa. Uh, welcome, thanks for that follow, much appreciated. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I am going to guess that, um, that we are probably ready to make this available to people to use. So the way that we tell them right now is we have this stream overlay little screen here that uh, just has text boxes with the URLs so that they can just copy paste that and not have to remember what the URL is to, in order to have these displays. So that's for an empty menu and that's for the full status uh, overlay. Uh, but we want uh, an events one as well. So let's go ahead and add that. Yes, hello, greetings, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Oh, I clicked restart instead of stop. <laughs> that was dumb. Uh, anyway, I'm going to click stop now. Let's toss that on the screen. And that ought to make it a little bit better. Uh, yes, welcome to the stream. Glad you're here. Uh, feel free to ask questions, uh, comment, or just watch. We have a lot of people that, that watch. Back when I used to do streams during uh, the work week, because I used to do uh, Mondays, uh... Tuesdays and Thursdays? Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday was our old schedule back in the day. And a lot of people would be working while they would uh, watch and they'd just wait for me to get excited about something and then uh, then they would uh, show up and be like, oh, hey, what's going on? Uh, stream overlay, that's the one I want. Uh, okay. Uh, so I just need another label and a text box. Uh, so that was the menu overlay, and this is going to be the event overlay. Um, event view. Uh, so event overlay URL, I'm going to need to set. Menu overlay URL. Uh, hey, Juice, welcome. Uh, did you see what we just built? Because if you didn't, you really are going to want to, because it is a nice improvement. Uh, we just did some really cool stuff. 
underscore E. Uh, e on that one as well. Uh, by default, it is events. There we go. Excellent. Uh, the hid hidden poppers. Uh, poppers technically hidden right now. Uh, it won't show up on that event view. Uh, r random poppers. Yeah. Uh, I don't announce popper. That's a good point. I absolutely need to put in an announcement of popper happening. Because that's... Obs now, keep in mind that the streamer still may not notice, because it's only there for a few seconds. So if they don't see that, they won't know that anything happened. So you're still welcome to have uh, have those hidden, and they will know nothing about it. Uh, show event. Um... There we go. <laughs> uh, what is Let's see. Suggest random pop. Uh, I've just realized the changes I was making to the car the other day I mean I can play Twitch while driving without getting. Oh, nice, Mr. Shoji. That's useful, I guess. Kind of. Uh, how about an if streamer equals swoogie? Uh, could you add a sound effect to popper? Oh, oh yeah. Do you want me to just make popper free if it's swoog? I could do that for you. Yeah, so, um... Uh... There we go. That might be better. Uh, I think we can technically trigger a sound effect, but let me try that. Um, this was talking about playing, like, sounds were supposedly possible with this without having to do anything extra. Uh... Yeah, how do I do this? Uh, yeah, that's old. Okay. I don't, it shouldn't be running IE in OBS. Okay, so how do I use sounds? You don't actually show me how to do it, so I just sort of have to take a guess. Uh... A chat facing chocobo auction? Mr. Shoji, I was thinking about doing some stuff with like the chocobo races and things like that, so you can integrate into that. Um... Yes, I, I think it is, uh, Mr. Shoji. I'm pretty sure it's WebKit, so... Which, uh, looking at that means it should support sounds. Uh, audio sources. But where is it pulling them from is what I'm wondering about. It says, like, so if we put it in the site, is this just going to be a relative path in our site? Or will it let me pull a source from somewhere else? Uh, cause if, if so, then, uh, then I know exactly, um, uh, what, what should go in there. Um, assuming that it can trigger it, um,
Which actually, I think about it, I'm going to want to pull this wide so we can do it again. Um, alright, so let's have a look at the script again. Because I'm actually just going to borrow this code and run it. Can I not just take that piece? I gotta, I gotta pull it all the way from here. You won't let me just steal that piece. I have to. Thanks, thanks, thing. Yeah, yeah, just, just, yeah, that was great. Thanks, thanks, guys. Console. Um. Yep, yep, yep. We're gonna have a bunch of those. That's fine. If you're wondering why I have so many errors down there, it's because uh, whenever I close the application, it can't find it, and so it's trying to get it, and it can't. Um, something, something, poppered. Okay, so something, something, poppered comes up. Now let's see if we can't add in that sound effect we were talking about. Uh, wait, what's going on? Go to entire fight, Kunk. When you tried to cure, did you get the error? It wasn't affecting. Looks like audio uses HTML elements. You know what? Uh, Node.js, GitHub. Are you you're open source, right? Good. Because they might have a test that shows how that works. Or a demo. Does that mean there's actually a demo site somewhere that I could look at, guys? Demo? Demo? Please demo? Demo? That's the only demo. Okay. Sound. Um, well, they claim that Demo.js, uh, is this site seriously not hosted anywhere? I'm just expected to run it. They literally didn't host this anywhere, even though they have a docs site. I am super confused by this, guys. Okay. Um... So, in this, they apparently use sound somewhere? But it's commented out. Alright, so I don't want that part. I just want sounds, and then I want sources, which they should have somewhere. So, sounds... Sources. And for sources, it is an array of sources, which we can do. 
Yeah, an array of URLs. Now the question is, can I reference another site for it? Like, can I pull one from somewhere else? Just for testing, we'll include one with it later. Uh, actually, do I have one locally? Um, um, I might. Uh, streaming. Uh, Um, given that it looks to mirror the underlying issue, you should be able to. Yeah. What's this audio? Oh, Banjo-Kazooie uh, failure. Yeah, we could do that. That wouldn't be bad. That could be... that could be bad. Uh... Well, one of those, yeah. Maybe. Or this one. <laughs> Actually, that one sounds really evil to do. Uh, let's do that one. We're totally doing that one. Alright, so I need to toss this for now into the folder that that's running in. Uh, so, in order to do that, I'm going to open up this folder. Uh, uh, where is it? It's there. There. Dub, 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 root. For now, I'm just going to toss it next to that, and we're going to see if it can play it, because it will be literally next to it. So the file's going to be there. And it is called... I don't know if it can play an MP3 or not, but that's what I downloaded. Well, I don't hear it, so... Sound played false. Has sound true. Uh... So it knew there was sound, and it chose not to play it. Uh, maybe I need to set the volume? I don't know what these amounts are. Looks like it again did not play the sound. Um, why didn't it play the sound though, guys? Why didn't it play the sound? This notification plays a sound? It does? I don't believe it. What do you put in the conditions, though? Do you know? Uh... 
I guess I could just do that. I I have no idea. You think just put both of them in there? Uh Ow. There you go. So it works. Streamer's just going along. Here's that sound. Uh oh. Yeah, no, it is a very not developer friendly API every afternoon. <laughs> yeah. You say lovely, I say mean. <laughs> Poor streamer. I need to put the file in the right place to do that. Now that is a file that actually creates a little bit of a challenge because I don't know that we can necessarily distribute that because um, Square Enix would own the rights to that audio clip, but we could just put in anything else and then like anything that's open and just tell people that they can change that file. If that makes sense. So we can just tell the streamer to just update that file with whatever they like. And if they want to put one in there that happens to be the Final Fantasy VII game over or something similar, then they can do that. Uh, welcome, uh, Diptim, uh, which I'm guessing is Tim, uh, but maybe I'm wrong. Either way, welcome. Thanks for uh, following. Welcome to the stream. Uh, you're right, Shoji. It might be enough, but this worked, so no complaints from me. Uh, every afternoon, if we could yank it from the Final Fantasy VII files at runtime, we absolutely should do that, which is a great point. Uh, Mr. Shoji, uh, you know how to grab images. Do you know how to grab the audio files as well? Uh, yeah, but I would still rather we not do it just because we are in, like... Yeah, because if we can pull that same that same data, then that would be uh, very useful. Because if that just comes out, then we don't have to distribute anything. Because then it's whatever they had on their computer. Like, I just don't want to get in the area where, like, if we if we can avoid it, we should avoid distributing anything that Square owns. And by Square, I mean Square Enix, obviously, because they do own the stuff. We don't want to step on their toes and make them angry. Okay, so I want to grab sounds, this piece that we just added in, and add this to right there. And we need to replace that. There we go. Hey, Todd. Welcome. How's how's the weather? Uh, all right, that should work pretty well. Uh, yep, yep, it's raining. We got some, we got some showers. Uh, yeah, I thought we were supposed to get rain-snow mix at some point. Something like that. Which is real nasty stuff. I don't know how close you are to the lake, so I don't know, I don't know what you're getting versus what I'm getting, but, uh, it's supposed to be nasty for all of us. So. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, what else needs a message on it? So we added one to, um, we added a message to the, uh, the materia command, the item command, uh, giving the player gill, removing their gill, uh, changing their equipment, the status effects. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we missed that we really need to get, um, really need to get messages for. Uh, menus, names. Oh, names. We do need names. Absolutely. When a, when a character name changes, um, Uh, uh, I will have a look, uh, Shoji, and see if it's there. Um, I forget where I have that on my computer. Uh, it's in here. Steam apps, common... So, uh, I don't have anything in the music OGG folder, but there is some stuff in the music one, which is weird. It's probably not the right stuff, but I'm guessing somewhere in these data files are the ones that we need. I just don't know if my copy's been altered. I haven't uh, reset to a fresh copy in a while. Yeah, it might be. So I'm not on a pure one. So I, I need to reset my files at some point, just to confirm that. Um, but if you actually have them there, then uh, we might be able to get away with that. Because if, if we can check that folder, we might be able to get something that way, because we could at minimum just copy the file in it at, at like startup. We could just be like, yeah, we need that file. Copy that into our www root folder for us, please. Um, and then do that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I was gonna check naming. So, um, right, I was gonna, uh, we trigger a domain event for that. I forgot that's how we did this. I really need to change how that works. Um, Uh, yeah, top name changed. We handle that. Uh, so, so and so's name is now that. Alright, so... That's the message. Uh, and this needs to get created with one of those before the loggers, because otherwise that doesn't make sense. So it's an I status hub emitter called status hub emitter. We're gonna create a variable for it. Failed to failed to failed to uh wait, so and so's name is now that. Yep, there we go. Yeah, I, I do want to find out what the... So if the game converter is messing them up, then then that is a concern because that might mean that anyone that was uh, modding their game might not be able to get the sound to work if we did it that way, which would be silly, but I don't know what the game converter is doing. So who knows? We'll have to take a look. Um, all right, so let's refresh this. Uh, and I'm going to check and see... So I do have that in there, but it's not set to deploy yet. Did it leave that folder alone, or did it delete it? Uh, 
Hang on, let me just see if it's still got the audio file in there. Okay, it does. All right, so let's try this out. All right, so game is running. We should be connected to this. So let's do a quick uh, petrify on everyone. Uh-oh. Uh, why can't I petrify him? Uh, you know what? Let's just reset the game. Just gonna restart the game. It's gonna be faster than messing with that. Um, that was one with a couple of people in a reactor. Here's one with a couple of people in a reactor. That was an okay spot. All right, so let's uh, get rid of this because we don't need that down there. Shrink down this screen to just, you know, like what it's going to be for an event. And now we're going to say cloud, Brendan. Uh, actually, let's let's make sure it renames. Um, spike, uh, 600. Okay, so it is currently just playing every time, which we do want to we do want to adjust that so it only does that for the ones that um, that are supposed to have it. But it is playing, which is good. Um, and it did do the name change one, but like, so Cloud's name is now yeah. So I need to get rid of the i7 off the beginning of that, so it doesn't say that. Uh, originally, I thought it was going to do it that way, but. Default names, name is now new name. Okay. Um, uh, so now inside of this, we need to make it so that the sound only happens. Um, can this pull that out? Yep, options. If condition, uh, this is going to be options dot sounds equals this. Uh, Tactile Dactyl, welcome. Thanks for that follow. Welcome to the stream. All right, so if we change the way that show event works, um, do I have that folder? Um, you know, I closed the thing, so let me check again. Um, Steam. F7, you are asking if I have music VG stream. Uh, yes, I do, uh, Mr. Shoji. I do, in fact, have that folder with a bunch of OGG files in it. So, yes, I have one. Yep. And one of those is probably that game over. But I don't know which one it is yet, so I'll have to listen to them. Okay, so it put them here when it converted it. Okay. So, in theory, we could check both spots if we knew which one we were dealing with. Okay, that's fine. Um... So we'll have sound file as the next thing, and we'll have 
We'll see if we can make a default to null so that maybe no one has to pass it. I'm not sure with that being on an interface um, whether or not we can get away with this or not. Um, I think here we're going to need to specify it on this. And then I think... Call it sound file. But I'm not 100% if it's going to let me get away with this or not. So we're going to say if sound file. Uh, and sound file needs to get passed. So that'll automatically wire up all the parameters from there. That'll get called there. Which means then when this gets called, when it's called by popper, Uh, this one we want to pass in the game over song. There we go. Now, I think this will work. Uh, did I turn what off and on, Janiscu? Alright, so it's live. Game is running. Let's bring up the status display again and refresh it. So now, um, uh, so Barrett's name is now Gunner. It didn't play anything. But if I do this, do I, I must have Popper turned off. No? You've been poppered and it didn't play the audio. So no audio. Uh, So that must not have gotten set. Hey, Tim, welcome. Hello, hello. Uh, is this Unity? Uh, no, we're not using Unity. We are connecting to the old Final Fantasy VII game. So, uh, and it was definitely not using Unity. Okay, so sound file did not get set when we called that. Uh, so the message said you've been poppered. And then that runs popper command we're setting it right there let's let's watch again just make sure that this is hitting the way we think it is so we get to here maybe I'm oh I don't pass it here okay yep see I'm like for some reason this just isn't getting through here there it goes and then this one just needs it as well. String sound file. Okay. There we go. That'll do it. It's over too. Thanks, Mr. Shoji. I will. Uh, I will see about grabbing that one then. Alright, so it is live again. I'm gonna run this. There's the game. Alright, so let's do another rename. Uh, Cloud. Uh, congrats, Shoji. So Cloud has been renamed to Shoji. It did not play any audio. 
but when I pop her, it still didn't play any audio. In fact, I didn't even get the popper command, which makes me think it failed in some way when it did that. Like something just didn't happen right, or did we... Okay, so we're on the sound file, we'll try it again. Uh, what did uh, someone someone says something? Uh, how do you read and write memory owned by other processes? Uh, <laughs> uh, with yes, with great fun, uh, as Mr. Shoji says. Um, oh no, I know why it didn't run. We got we caught that breakpoint. Oh derp, 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 derp. Um. Okay, good. It is playing. Um. Yes, as Mr. Shoji says, there are some system functions that you can use to wire yourself into uh, another process and then read its uh, stuff. Uh, Diptim, uh, no, we're not using any Unity for this. This is C Sharp and .NET Core. Uh, we're actually running .NET Core 3.1 uh, with a WPF application as the front end uh, instead of Unity. Uh, since we're not actually building a game and we're, we're building a, a web interface for it to be uh, displayed on a streamer's screen, uh, we just set it up that way, so uh, there's no Unity, and uh, Final Fantasy VII was uh, written n not using Unity either. It's an old uh, PlayStation game that got um, basically um, um, migrated over to PC, uh, and you know that's the version that we're running here. Is the Steam version of Final Fantasy VII is actually what is running here, and thanks someone for that lovely menu color. That's great. Uh, we'll just fix that. Um, yes, exactly. Uh, as Mr. Shoji says, uh, if you are running your Final Fantasy VII as admin, then uh, obviously we you'll need to run Interactive 7, our program, as admin also in order to have access to the process. So... Uh... Uh, Dip Tim, uh, yeah, if you know C Sharp, then, uh, then yes. Uh, yeah, I, uh, Tactile, I, I don't, I don't think, uh, I think he just missed my answer before, uh, when I responded about that. Uh, so this is a project that, that, um, that people could, uh, theoretically contribute to, because it is just C Sharp, so, uh, there's nothing crazy about it. So, uh, either way, I am pretty darn happy with that. I don't think I want to commit the, uh, like, that actual, like, audio file. I think I want to get the, uh, over to OGG file, uh, moved in and, uh, have it running from the game files of the user, because that'll make it so that we're not distributing any of that. Uh, there's everything crazy about it, but that doesn't stop. Okay, that's, that's true, Mr. Shoji, that is true. Um, uh, but either way, um, I want to let people know that I am, uh, this week I'm going to, uh, I, I, I'm again going to try and do a weekday stream. I don't know what day of the week it'll be, but sometime this week I want to do a stream, uh, even if it is just a short one or a, uh, you know, so, something like that. Uh, but I do want to get a weekday stream in because I haven't done one in a while. Um, if you are new here, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is obviously Brendan. It says it right below here. And um, I am the host of the Dev Chatter live stream, but we do have uh, a pretty awesome community of developers here that are interested in stuff. If you do want to check that out, uh, we have a Discord group, which is where most of us chat. That's where you can find out about what's going to be happening on, on any stream that we're going to do here. Uh, and uh, if you are interested in catching our future streams, the best way to do that is to make sure that you follow our channel because then you can get a notification when the stream goes live uh, and join us for that. Uh, not all of our streams are about gaming. Some of them are just general programming streams as well. Uh, though I do like doing these Final Fantasy VII ones because it is quite fun to program a thing that uh, a community on Twitch is going to get a lot of use out of. So if you haven't seen someone using Interactive 7 Live, it gets pretty crazy. Uh, it is very fun. Uh, there is a streamer uh, that I'm going to shout out right there uh, that does do streams using Interactive 7. So uh, if you check out that uh, Eswoogie uh, over there, who I'm going to uh, hilariously say his name. Uh, most people seem to call him Swoog, uh, but... Um, 
even though he's got an E and, and an I on the end of that. I don't know. But anyway, um, he's a pretty cool streamer. Uh, does uh, Final Fantasy VII streams mostly, and you'll if you watch his stream, you'll get to see some Interactive Seven uh, getting used by his chat uh, to ruin his day, which is quite entertaining. Uh, if you want to check out the source code that we, we do here on the stream, most of the stuff we do is out on GitHub at github.com slash devchatter. Link in the chat as well as down below. Uh, and then you can find archives of all of our old stuff. So if you want to see how we built everything in Interactive 7 or any of our other chatbots or other projects, uh, everything is over on our YouTube channel linked over there, youtube.com slash c slash devchatter and broken out into playlists so you can find what you're looking for reasonably easily. And, uh, Lastly, I want to mention to people to follow me on uh, Twitter, uh, as that is another place to find out what's going on and things like that. But um, either way, I am going to run our credits. We will absolutely be back next week at a minimum, because uh, I don't know why I wouldn't be back here next week. Uh, I didn't mean to click that button. That was the wrong button. Um, so now you get green. Uh but I do want to roll our credits, so I want to make sure that I thank Common Rider for that uh, uh, cheer that he did earlier on, and for some reason it lost track of the fact that SMB was here. Uh, but thank you, SMB, for hanging out today, and thank you, Tactile Dactyl, Dip Tim, uh, Messed, uh, Zufu, and Mirka, and House Bazooka and SMB. Thank you very much for resubscribing to the stream, both of you. Always appreciated. And uh, we will be back for some more coding next week. But again, I am going to try to do a weekday stream, so make sure you've got your notifications turned on so you can catch that. Either way, we will see you next time for some more programming. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, everyone. Happy coding. And uh, yeah, don't, don't do anything crazy. Bye, everyone. <laughs>